Do you want Teflon's answers? <laughs> yeah, if you want, yeah. <coughs> right, I'm yeah, going to put the audio on. That get him. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 and that. Is the audio on? Yeah, audio's on. Okay. I'm trying to worry about that. Yes, we are bang on time because it is just gone 11 o'clock. So okay, let's go. I'm ready. Are ready? Break a leg, everybody. Yeah. Five, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all are listening to the Overseas Connection podcast. Shut up and sit down. Here we go. Would you come? I think we're just getting started. I'm a witcher. I think this is more than you can handle. He sits on his ass all day. Let's do this. Okay, the new. My name is Bongo the Seen, and I am not broadcasting from Scotland. Even though one of our team is in Scotland right now, if you see her, avoid at all costs. <laughs> Welcome to the Overseas Connection podcast. This is a gaming program for our community. We are a group of mature gamers from all over the world who love to be social, love video games, love to have fun. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, stay tuned and enjoy the show. I'm Robin Tate, I'm Bongo the Seen, and I'm in Northern Ireland. So here we are for a wonderful show. Uh, if you're following the Mayan calendar, this is February the 18th, 2016, and it's show 409. Tonight, I have some some strange people with me tonight. Uh, I've, I've got Mark Annex spinning the discs. Mark, Welcome back to the show, sir. Hello. Hello, Robin. Hello, yes. Uh, it's great to be back again. A uh, couple of weeks off for uh, some family reasons. So, yeah, it's great to be back. How are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm really good, actually. Hosting I, again. Uh, yeah, uh, hosting again. Yeah. yeah. Where's, where's our leader then tonight? Where, where's he going again? He is at uh, Pudi Pie Training School because there seems right. to be an opening there and <laughs> he goes straight for it. Any opportunity that he can, he sees loads of young pre-teens and young kids that he can make videos for in that squeaky <laughs> voice of his. So PewDiePie he training skill is, is perfect for him. He'll have to shave off that little moustache he's just started growing. He's just got a moustache just right there. He's been, <laughs> he's been trying to grow that now for three years, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just it's been a long time. All right. We've also got Kim. Kim, gamer girl. Hello. Hi, hey, everybody. How are you doing? We're All doing good. Sounds. Good. Awesome, awesome. I, I, uh, I'm doing good as well. So I see you with the brown, the still, background. Still, yes, the I am still the, yeah, I am still sadly in the old hermit cave. So, you know, money issues. If you, you, you can't fix a house, you don't have any, any money. So dad had to go back to work. So, you know, uh, I'm hoping. You, you know, You'll get March, there. You'll get there. March, yeah, March. I hope so. I'm hoping. Yeah, because it was the second week of February. Well, then we ran into problems with that. So, um, yeah, March. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, that'll be nice. It'll be springtime for Kimster <laughs> well, in the fatherland. Uh, what, 65 degrees today, and it's supposed to be in the 60s pretty much for the rest of uh, the weekend and in the next week. So uh, I'm, I'm told it's going that. to be warmer in the UK on Monday than it is in, yeah. Spain, in Spain. That's not saying much. It's still going to be bloody cold. That's just an <laughs> odd, odd statistic that some weatherman's seen. It's been really mild today, though. Apparently, we've, there's this like heat wave coming up from somewhere. I don't know. I hear it's, it's, it's very warm for February. It has yeah, been I, today, anyway. I hear it's the Bahamas, man. Yeah. The heat wave is coming from the Bahamas. They're sending it up there with their coconuts and bananas and their tequila. That's not wrong. That's Mexico. And that's, mm. that's somewhere else altogether. <laughs> <laughs> and my geography is as good as Greg's. Also tonight, we have Tom. and we, <clears throat> His mother calls him Tom, but we fondly <laughs> know, know him as Pedro. Uh, Peds, how are you, sir? Hello. Yeah, great to be here. Very good. Thank you. Nice. Nice. Peds, we're good. Peds, you are a member of this podcast crew. Yes. It's been very hard to get you on the podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're a busy man. <laughs> I was, well, when you asked me to join, I was like, yeah, this would be great. And then I realized that Saturday nights are a really popular night to go out, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, 
the social calendar fills up and then the last few weeks I've been suffering with like colds and flu and stuff and sounded not so good. <laughs> well, thankfully, that is the joy that is the commune of the Overseas Connection. Now, we are a monster of a podcast <laughs> with a fantastic cast that we can pick and choose. I think Fraser, he's out clubbing children or is that club <laughs> camping with the cubs i can't make last, out which one it is last last i heard they were throwing him under the ice and drowning all the kids weren't they <laughs> yeah yeah i think they went straight out today and fell through the ice into yeah, the, the uh, water yeah no, the, think... the scout leaders were having a bit of a bit of a panic on a bit of a bit of a stress session <laughs> Oh, he'll be all right. He'll manage it. We actually spotted tonight, or I spotted on a thing called Gumtree, which is like Craigslist, uh, a lookalike Fraser. And I had to post it up. And I didn't realize a lookalike Fraser was a, like a trailer that goes onto the back of a tractor. So it, it actually looked very, very like Fraser. Kim, you had pointed out. Yeah, it was, it, it was like eerie. Him. Yeah, it really was. Wins. Yeah, yeah, it was like full of shit and went along slowly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a this is a, a podcast about video games, and well, uh, we, do you know what? Uh, it is about video games, but you know, it's more like us getting together for a chat, and uh, we play some games if we can. Uh, life is tough for us guys that are thirty plus. Um, ha. 30 plus I'm fucking Sorry, so she, she, she yeah <laughs> 30 plus um Raffle so Kim, Kim's still young baby yeah what, I'm still what, you know not did there yet. we what did we get up to this week Kim I, I dare I, I'm almost frightened <laughs> to ask do we have to talk about it again oh do we have to because I mean aren't people tired of this by now I don't know. Well, I mean, if you've got somewhere in it, if there's something exciting has happened, no. let's let's see. This yeah. is now week three or week four of Gems of War talk. Uh, so we always have a jingle, it's, a jingle probably. for this. It's Gems of War with Kim. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your list, isn't it? You played it is Gems on my of list War. because yeah, I I played it. I mean, I could have left it off there, but you know, then I'd be lying, sort of. By omission, I guess. And did um, anything exciting happen in it this week? Did you no, unlock an achievement? No, um, no, no, not this week. I did a few weeks ago, but not, no, not this week. Okay, James, no, I'm not talking. No, no, I'm not talking about James Moore anymore. No, thank God. No, okay, but I do see something <sighs> new on there. Yes, and it's, it's new to Xbox. It did come out it last is. year. Indeed. Talk about Fallout Shelter. Uh, I just, uh, well, it came out free, what was it, last week, I think? And um, so I downloaded it because I played it a hell of a bunch on my phone and, and finally got to the point where I had to put it down because, you know, I, I'd reached a point where I'm like, you know what, I can't watch any more people die. So um, anyway, I decided to uh, download it on the Xbox and give it a shot. And I have to say, it's a little, I don't know if it's wonky is the right word I'm looking for, but I guess after playing it on my phone for so much, trying to play it on the Xbox has been a little difficult. But um you know, I'm back at it. So far, I haven't managed to kill anyone. I've been uh, raided once. So far, the Death Claws haven't shown up yet, but give it time. So, um, yeah. I've been, I don't know. I think I've unlocked about five achievements on it or four or something like that. So, so it's, it's a touch game it was on the screen, wasn't it? Like a, like a, yeah. yeah. I never played it. I downloaded it, never touched it. Um, mm -hmm. is, does it have any connection or any crossover with the actual game? No, I was kind of hoping it did because, like I said, I, I had this whole big vault started when I played it on my phone. But no, there there isn't a, a any crossover or anything like that. You can play it on the computer, so there is that. Mm. But um, I don't know. I think there were some legal issues or something as to why they couldn't cross it with the phone. You know what I'm saying? So um, you pretty much have to start over. You know, yeah. if you had a big vault on the phone, so. That that's not really a big deal. Uh, can I can I just add? Um, I've I've looked yes. at this. I've, I've played it very briefly, but I played it on the PC. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know. Greg mentioned it last week. No, the play anywhere because you can carry on on the Xbox and on the PC. This works superbly on the PC with a mouse. Mm. This is definitely a mouse type game. Um, where you can just drag the people around. It it runs really really well on Windows Ten. Uh, I've not tried it on the Xbox yet, uh, but I've heard a few people say it's a bit clunky. Yeah, uh, a little bit, because, you know, you're used to using your finger to move the people around shit like, and yeah, like that, and yeah. now you've got to hold a button, and, and, you know, it's a little, you know, it takes a little getting yeah. used to. Yeah. So. 
but yeah, it's great on PC. If you've got Windows 10 machine, uh, I don't think um, it'd take that much of a PC to run this game. So um, yeah, if you've got Windows 10, it'd be better playing it on there, I think. I'll try it on the laptop, see how it turns yeah. out. Yeah, it can't be that 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 processor intensive a little thing like that. No, yeah. not so many strategy it's... games do work well when they come across on the console, do they? I can't mm. think of one which really worked. Mm. Halo Wars. Yeah, Halo Wars. I know yeah, really like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I mean, I think I heard a lot of people they played it and then you hit a wall with it because it just got so grindy and and just almost too complex or not complex, just so much going on with it. But anyway, it's free and it was worth dabbling with. And you've also went back to The Witcher 3. Yeah, week. yeah, you know, because my, my nephew loves Geralt and Roach and all that. So he was over yesterday and he spent the night. So we fired up The Witcher 3 because I tried playing Jim Zor with him here and Fallout Shelter. And he just looked at me like I was killing him. <laughs> so, you know, we fired up old Witcher 3 and then we uh, stumbled on some more Witcher gear. What was it? The uh, Cat School. We got some of that. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, it's good to get that, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, I'm like a level 13, and it's telling me this is like a level 23, and I'm like, oh, what the hell, because we accidentally yeah. stumbled across it somewhere, and I'm like, what the hell, we'll give it a try, and, you know, it's it's pretty good so far, even though I'm not a level 23, and uh, was it Griffin School, I stumbled onto that today, so, yeah. um, you know, we're, we're, so we're plotting along. Some of these part of the DLC, these um, Witcher gear, because I remember not finding these until I started the, the DLC, I think it was the... Not my heart. Yeah, the Hearts of Stone. Not yeah, because it's, yeah. it said on uh, True Achievements today, I started the Hearts of Stone DLC, and all yeah. I can think is, um, no, I haven't. But then that that must be why, because yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, I don't think I have. So, uh, yeah, we're plodding along with that. Um, I'm trying to think if I've done anything big and momentous. I am now the uh, boxing champion of Velen, so there is that, <laughs> you know. Yeah. The, the sergeant stepped up, they're all big and bad, and he's like, I'm going to kick your ass, and yeah, about three punches, he was down. So I'm like, yeah, you're big and bad, all right. Keep telling yourself that. So, um, you know, don't I might meet, get that done next year. Don't meet Kim in a dark alley. Well, that's, that's it's right, on my, damn it. It is on my Dirty 30. It is one of those biggies. I've got to see, I have so many bloody big games on my Dirty 30. Oh, I hear um, you. I've got Witcher 2 on there, so, you know, I'm like, oh, God, I'm, I won't get it done. <laughs> uh, well, when 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 you complete a game, there will be a celebration. We will have a party, Kim. <laughs> yeah, we, I appreciate will be, it. Yeah, I'm working I, on I just, it. You know, I I've already I've thought. I haven't asked Mark yet, but when that comes, uh, the 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 theme music from Peggle <laughs> will have to be played definitely. Um, okay, look, Peg, you haven't been on for a while. <clears throat> yep, you're playing Mark's favorite game. Um, dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> So right. I'm I'm almost, I'm almost frightened to ask, but we'll, I'll just let you two sort of crack on, crack I, on. Okay. Well, after listening to Mark for many many weeks and <laughs> seeing him on social media and seeing him in the Discord chat rave about this game, I thought, Do you know what? I haven't dipped in to my Yolk um, pot yet. I still had the hundred pounds, and for Christmas I had a fifteen pound voucher. So I thought, well, it's only going to cost me another five. I think it was nineteen ninety nine. So I thought, yeah, I'll dip in and I'll try it as it's only costing five. And I've still got 95 left on my budget. And Mark said, you've got to do the tutorial. Do the tutorials. I have not got past the tutorials. <laughs> oh, no. I find I the they're so clunky. But there's there's a the, the last mission on the tutorials, is it the one you have to go out to kill a big anaconda or something yeah, yeah it's but, almost but it's, impossible that's yeah. but it's not it's planet. not completing it it's it's doing it you get to get to handle the ship and that you get the feel of it yeah. that's that's the point of it you get to the feel of it i must admit i haven't played a space sim game and i think that was the appeal for me i was thought Do you know what I, I was having a little bit of a lull in games i've, I've got all the games on the list and I've, i just finished fallout 4 and i jumped into witcher 3 and I thought, I'm not feeling a long game. I, maybe I just need a change. And that's why I thought, right, let's try something out of the box, something I haven't done before. Uh, so I thought I'd jump into this. And I must admit, it took a little bit of getting used to. But then once you start getting, you know, the throttle, and it's quite intuitive, actually, to navigate around your, your spacecraft. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's still going to take uh, a lot of uh, sort of like getting used Thrusting. to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I must admit, since I started playing it on the PC, 
I've not gone back to the Xbox version because. Oh really? Yeah, it's it's so good with the uh, the Thrustmaster. Oh, <laughs> with the, the old Potas joystick. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good because you got the throttle lever, you got the joystick. It's just it's so natural, you know. It's it's so good. So, mm. oh, so you okay. enjoying it? I am. I am enjoying it. Yeah, I haven't, yeah. Ha- I haven't been able to put a lot of time into it. It was one of those games where I thought, you know what, I'm going to have to wait until you're online or someone else yeah. from the community is online to yeah. sort of like take my hand and take me through, <laughs> baby step me through it. <laughs> I-, I feel quite guilty because with, with my sort of like ramblings for the past few weeks on the Elite Dangerous, there was quite a few people started playing this and picked it up. So yeah. I feel a bit guilty, really. But but on the <laughs> other hand, I don't feel guilty because it's such a great game. So oh, I can see there's there's like potential goes on and on with this game yeah i can see how you've sunk so many hours into it yeah and it's one of those games what never ends as well so it'll always be there to if you just want to spend an hour or so on it and and not go to it for a, for a while it's it's just always there it's not one of these where you you forget where you are in the story or anything because there is no story <laughs> you, you make your own story yeah so. are you still playing it mark because i'm going to see it's not on your list so no, um, i have just, just I have, been busy so, yeah, I've 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 touched on it a little bit, but not enough to, uh, not not enough to sort of like add anything to any extra what I've already talked about because um, it's been a bit of a hectic couple of weeks for me uh, family yeah. wise. So yeah, uh, but I have played a game from yesterday. It came out this week, but I'll talk about that in a bit. So unless so, um, got... so Ped, you've all all been, been back to Minecraft. Yeah, back to Minecraft which I haven't touched for such a long time. I was quite late on the bandwagon for Minecraft as well because I always looked at it for man, it's got NAF graphics, it's for kids, and just totally boo-hooed it, never touched it. And then one day, uh, I think it was me, I think Step J, we said, come on, it's, it's cheap, let's just jump in. It was like 15 quid. And do you know what? It's probably the best value for money game out there. It just goes on and on and on. Um, but yeah, no, when I was getting frustrated with all the games, having a bit of a lull, I was like, oh, I don't know what I want to play. And I just thought, I don't want to have to think. I think that's the good thing about it is like the other day I was playing with a couple of buddies online and we were just chipping. I was chipping away at blocks for about an hour. I wasn't even doing anything. I was just chipping away. Didn't know what I was doing. But I was like, yeah, do you know what? It's, it's nice sometimes to not have to think, not get frustrated with gaming and just enjoy it for just passing the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, right it's um, it, 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 in in my household, it is still one of the most played games. I'd say between it and Roblox, but yeah. even when I haven't played a while, but it is like a comfy pair of slippers. You can go back into yeah. it and just get lost. And I think there's yeah, there's something therapeutic about Minecraft because I've sunk so many hours into this. I, I own mm. it on just about every single system going. Up. <laughs> Obviously, the first time I played it was on the 360, and mm-hmm. oh man, we, we, we the whole community just went nuts over it. We just spent yeah. so many hours on on a server. We had uh, between me and Parsit, we had two Xboxes running 24/7, technical right. turns, posted because <laughs> we weren't realms or anything. Um, yeah. yeah, we used to host it like our own little private server. Oh, it's so good. Has yeah, there been any the more talk about um, the servers or private servers for PlayStation yeah. or Xbox yet? No, they've gone quiet on it. It's really disappointing because yeah. E3 last year, everyone was so buzzing about these realms, and it came to Windows 10, um, mm-hmm. and it also came to the the sort of like the Java version of uh, Minecraft. Um, but there's no cross compatibility with them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the Xbox version was coming soon, and it's still coming soon. <laughs> and that was that was like last last E3. So, um, Peds, if I can also ask you as well. I mean, while you've been away, you've been very very busy with other stuff as well. So there's yeah. been there's been dodgy boys and dice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's other the and other projects that you're involved with as well. What what's been going on there, Peds? Well, uh, uh, what we've dudes and dice, yeah, and all that. Well, what have all you been doing? Well, I've been out it. Well, we we're, we're working on dudes and dice, the, the old true skill guys who I did with. Um, but it, we sort of like we, we started going in one direction, and we thought actually, do you know what? This we can open this up a little bit. We can do better. So we're, we're taking our time with it. There's we've said, look, let's not rush to put anything out. Let's have fun with it. Try out new things. And I think the thing is, you know, we did a podcast for like a year, just just under a year and a half. 
and you've learned quite a lot and we thought it might be quite nice to hone the the limited skills i will say uh, they are limited but let's try and push ourselves a little bit harder let's see if we, what we can do with the audio quality the sound effects and mm. sort of like bring out something a bit more produced um, so that's that's the idea with that one and in the meantime i've also been working on uh, another little podcast which has just come out so do you want to talk about it i can talk about it i don't want to do a shameless plug no no just do a shameless plug plug. get it plugged it's good get right. it plugged okay well it's called the <laughs> pedamella show uh, it's available now on iTunes and Podbean and so on and so forth. It is, we're describing it as a rants and bants podcast. So it's basically, you know, if people have got rants, they can send them into us. Um, and we scroll through the social media, finding the ridiculous. And if everyone's got those things on social media, which, you know, gr- you know, grinds their gears. And we're going through and we're finding those and we're sharing it. It's a little bit close to the bone at times, but you know. Oh god damn it. Oh, oh I need to get stuff in. It's like it's like on we go onto <laughs> Facebook and somebody says, Oh, uh, repeat this or share this with three oh. fa- friends and you'll cure it, cancer. It's, oh, it's, do you know I what hate them. the chain letters are oh, no. chains? You should be sending speak pipes in because yes, this is exactly oh. the sort of thing we're at with ours. It drives us nuts when you see all that stuff and uh, you know we pick out a lot of the funny stupid little stories which you find out in the newspapers predominantly the the cheap nasty british media of the sunday sports and things like that but we're, we're having a bit of fun with it so nothing serious there at all it's only about an hour long but yeah See, if you want to get involved Pet- petamella and dudes and dice it just they they sound a bit dodgy like dudes yeah. and dice sounds <laughs> yeah. like a like a meal sort of sex game. <laughs> yeah. CD Backstreet, uh, <laughs> yeah, Blue oh, Oyster oh, Bar. <laughs> it's like Russian roulette with in a gay bar sort of thing, yeah. you know. With, yeah, with exactly. yeah. <laughs> You're in the ballpark. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, exactly, exactly in the ballpark. We're talking yeah. rusty trumpet sort of stuff yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, and after, after listening to all those episodes with uh, Step Jane and all these uh, sexual encounters. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Story that guy. Yeah, it's funny. Sorry, I've, this this new term, rusty trumpet, has came into my vocabulary this week, and I had to go, I had to go and look it up. If you don't know what a rusty trumpet is, yeah. Google it, and and I take no responsibility for what rusty trumpets are. There, sorry, rusty trumpet is the female version. It's the rusty trombone is the male version. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, have oh. a look at those. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had my fifteen-year-old nephew the other day explain to me what an angry dragon is. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna have to uh, repeat that. Mate. Have, have a look. Urban look yeah, yeah, have a look. Have a look. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, earlier on today, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of disjointed here. We went to see um, the new Lego movie. Oh, Lego Batman. Yeah. yeah so uh, one of the wee chaps is away, so it freezes up for a bit for the weekend, and off we went. The six of us went to the movies, and I, I have a problem. With the movies because it's this big comfy seat and it's so nice and lovely and i just have a wee tub of of cookie dough ice cream into me and i get settled down and i'm asleep within the first 10 asleep. minutes <laughs> <laughs> i don't know whether it was a movie or what it was and judith and then pokes me about halfway through you're snoring <laughs> i really enjoyed the last half of it it was really good. I couldn't tell you about the first half. I just fell asleep. It was bloody odd. just anyway. But yeah, leg, Lego. That's that's what I do. I sleep in the cinema. Um, <laughs> okay. So speaking of of things that you've you've done, Mark, um, yeah. and you've been influenced by other people. Yeah, I can only think that you're playing this game because you've got sucked into the hype. <laughs> yeah, and well, believing that that amateur podcast. And that chap that was on last week, Conan Exiles. Yeah, um, yeah, Conan Exiles. Well, for those who are like long-term listeners, they'll know the uh, the love we had for Rust back in the day. Uh, there was a few of us played Rust. There was uh, me, uh, Defoe, uh, Nicole, Fraser Moo, an Epic Scotsman, and Duke Scaff, and we had a private server set up for a while, and it was so much fun. It's like a um, survival type game. So Conan Exiles is very similar. It's a survival game set in the Conan the Barbarian era. Um, uh, so obviously there's a few changes from 
the Rust help, uh, you've got uh, mythical beasts, uh, like you've got these weird monster things. Uh, there's gods you can pray to and set up shrines to and in, get influence that way. One second, Mark. Just yep. just so our listen, listeners can understand what is going on. Conan in the background <laughs> sound effects are not being played in the background. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Mark's other better half yeah. has wonderful wonderful sleeping habits and she must be in the background there somewhere with her yeah. head back mouth wide open and snoring like a small group of of minky whales it, it might be her or it might be my son jason because they're both both fast asleep <laughs> so it could be either of them or probably both of them. Uh, so they're probably cool. synchronized snoring if uh, well, kim was here it'd be dogs You've yeah. got the snoring wife and son. That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Conan. Don't be, you know, it's connection podcast without something going off in the background, would it? So Conan <laughs> Exile has got muscly, muscly yeah. men so, in, in yeah. the guitars and stuff like that. Then. Yeah. So yeah, so it's um, a survival game. So uh, you start off on a crucifix, and this guy, which I presume is Conan, comes across to you. Uh, it's in like a cutscene, cuts you down, and leaves you, and you've got to fend for yourself then. Crucifixion. Uh, so, Crucifixion? No, yeah. no, no. Okay, then you've got a left. First crucifix. <laughs> um, so you start off, uh, You, if you've got the server with the nudity turned on, you start off completely stark bollock naked. Uh, <laughs> you can set your character up and set the size of your appendage or breasticles or whatever you want. Did you Sounds like my sort of game. Did you do it? Did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, I have to be a woman because I might as well watch a woman naked ass walk around in front of me rather than a man's. Uh, in fact, we all did. Uh, but was me, Gary DeFelice. It's his fault I haven't played this, by the way. Uh, and same old ground, Sean. Um, all three of us, all women. Uh, Gary and Sean put the biggest boobs on you could imagine. But <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Uh, so, yeah, so you... I'm, I'm digressing now. So no, no, I mean, we're, we're enjoying this. We're enjoying it. Yeah, we're with you all the way here. Yeah. Sure, the game's not, but t- two out because, of three is not because bad. Because boobs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there are other appendages for the ladies. Um, so you have to... Uh, oh, sure. oh, what other appendages for the ladies? <laughs> well, you've got the boobs. What other appendages do you have? Is oh, this, like, think if you go a male character, what's he got swinging between his legs? Yeah, but you can set the length of that as well, either size of that. Okay. <laughs> but don't. Only will look like a third leg, you know. Yeah. <laughs> in comes tripod. Yeah, pole vaulting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, to get into the crux of a game, so you have to. Scavenge... Yeah, we weren't there already, apparently. <laughs> scavenge for food and water uh, to survive. Um, now, to get to the water, um, when you get near the water's edge, you can imagine all the creatures and everything are going to be around there because they don't really like the desert. They prefer where the water is to survive. So the nearer you get to water, the more dangerous it is. Uh, so that adds uh, some sort of like good gameplay element to it. Um, can you go in the water? Yes, you can. You can swim and you're usually quite safe at the moment. We haven't it's in early access is uh, is this game so it's not a finished product so at the moment when you go swimming in the water apart from crocodiles none of the creatures will go in the water so to escape them you, you just go in start swimming and you, you can get does, does boob size have any have any advantage on buoyancy <laughs> no i've noticed no i've noticed yeah <laughs> you probably paid attention but anyway <laughs> yeah, I thought yours was coming at me the other day, but then it, I just noticed it was another fella going past. But it wasn't a fin. Um, so where was that? Right. So yeah, so you eat and drink uh, to survive. Uh, now to to eat, you can collect um, berries and stuff off off bushes, but they're quite rare. Uh, or you can collect insects and eat the insects, but it doesn't give you a lot of energy. Uh, so the best way to eat is to kill some animals. So to kill the animals, you have to craft some gear. So you want to craft like a hatchet or a pickaxe, and eventually you can craft a sword. Uh, so you want to start getting resources like stones and branches and, and wood. Uh, and it just goes on from there. The more resources you've got, the more it opens up. Um, 
as you level up with your XP, you unlock uh, skill points to increase your attributes like your, your vitality or your encumbrance level and everything. And you also unlock different recipes. So these recipes are like uh, armor, um, building materials like walls and windows and doors. Uh, so the more you, you progress into it, the more you can build. Okay, it's 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 rust. It's survival. It's arc. It's rust in corner, well, yeah. I hear I hear it's hard. It, hear it's it is tough, yeah, to start out. Yeah, uh, once you've got your base established, it gets a little bit easier. What? That one up there in my window is sniggering because I said I hear it's hard. <laughs> I see her face now. She can't stop herself. No, she, I'm trying, really. just, just it's us. It's not us. It's it's her. <laughs> Listeners. <laughs> she probably said yes. Nicole sniggering in Edinburgh like thousands of thousands of miles away. She had the same thing. Right. Oh, dear. Yeah, she'll be holding her haggis in her hand right now. The timorous wee beastie that it is. She'll be sipping on her dram and then <laughs> having flat, <laughs> flat sausage. <laughs> um, excuse me. Well, when you die in this game, um, it's like like in Rust and that you you lose everything. Um, but it's not totally lost because it's still on your body. So if you can get back to your body and then loot your old corpse, you can get all your gear back. Uh, but sometimes when you've died in an area where there's a lot of dangerous animals, it's not as easy as it sounds. And also, if you haven't um, used a sleeping uh, rug, or well, it's not a sleeping bag, but we have like a sleeping mat, what you can craft. If you don't craft one of them, you spawn randomly. So sometimes you don't even know where you are. But if you, if you use a sleeping mat, uh, then you will respawn on that mat. Uh, but then that mat gets used and you have to create another one, you have to craft another one. I'm probably doing a, a shocking way of describing this game, but yeah, it's really good. It's quite addictive. Um, so it has boobs and, 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 and willies. Yeah. It has sleeping mats and rocks, lots and lots of rocks. Yeah, lots and lots of rocks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, you had me at boobs. Yeah, Gar <laughs> Gary, Gary bought this on Steam, and and I Steam share with with Gary. So he says, oh. He texts me saying, I've caved in, I've caved in, I bought it. Have a go of it, have a go. He, he even played it, yeah. He just downloaded it and went to bed. So I, I sort of like goes on it, um, was it Thursday night or Friday morning? Um, and I was hooked. Uh, just like Rust, we were all hooked on that. So, yeah, another game to... I'm, I'm easily distracted out, I think. <laughs> Elite, hmm. now this, so... You know what the heck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, Get your fun when you find it. Yeah, um, I've not really beaten that... Oh, what's the word? I've lost my mojo over the past couple of weeks with everything what's going on. So this has sort of like pulled me back into gaming a bit. So I'm glad, really. It's good. good. I'm enjoying it. Good. Well, I'm cracking on still with Metal Gear. I don't know. God mm -hmm. almighty. It's such a big game. You've finished it, <laughs> haven't you, Peds? Yeah, you've... you've no, no, I've not, I've not, not done Metal Gear. Oh, right. Well, I'm at about chapter 21 or 22 now out of 50. Um... <laughs> uh, it is brilliant. The depth of the game is fantastic. You know, yeah. fiddle, having quiet, helping me now is is brill. Uh, getting to grips with all of the systems is cool. Some of the story beats are brilliant. But mm -hmm. uh, I I also felt a bit uh, over the last week or two because I just just to realise he's how big this is. But when yeah. I sit down to play it, it is brill. But yeah. my problem is my time has been so limited over the last cast few weeks uh and i mean for example next week i'm monday morning i'm off i'm not back until thursday night i'm off to dublin um for a trade show um a food trade show it's a good trade show it's fun you know it's it's food um yeah and i was actually i was thinking about putting the ps4 in and bringing it to my hotel room and it may never get switched on but it's be the first time i've done that but i might because i want to get crack stuck into the last of us and that might be a thing to do if I just yeah. my problem. Monday night, I, I I don't have any engagements, but the other night, Tuesday and Wednesday night, I'll be entertaining visitors mm. from other companies and stuff. So I mightn't have a lot of time. But even for Monday night, if I get a crack at it, it might be an, a nice wee session to do. Yeah. Um, so Metal Gear is fantastic, loving it, really good, and I'm gonna crack on, keep at it. Uh, I fired up this morning again. 
uh, off my list, Super Time Force. Oh, and I forgot the other, bit, the other one. Super Time Force. I, I played a few few bits of it, uh, an hour or two. It's, no, it's not that long, but I'm completely lost. I, it's a great little game. It is all 8-bit, and you die, and you repeat, and you can rewind and 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 discover yourself again. But I'm going to have to play it for another uh, half hour or so before I work out again where, how it all works. Because uh, you've got like Rambo characters and different types of characters you can play as, and they all have different skills. And it's manic and quick and fast. Um, but it's one of those games if you leave it for too long, you forgot everything about it. Yeah. One thing I didn't put on my list last Sunday morning, I got up and even though I'd owned it and that was free this month, was uh, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. And I sat down with uh, Charlie and one of the other lads in the house. And we started it up, and we started from the beginning, and we played it from start to finish. Uh, and it was about three and a half hours, something out there. That is a fantastic couch co-op game. Yeah, that it's right up there with um, Overcooked and stuff like that. There to play, it is. Um, it's a cartoony. You've maybe seen the, the photographs of it. It's been out for a while. Uh, you have this sort of round spaceship and somebody controls the engine and some, then you have to run to control the guns or the shield or the, the, there's four different turrets and all different wee skills and they unlock stuff as you go along. And you just have to work as a team to, to get through the different levels and fight the different creatures and save these love bunnies to save the, the universe from unlove. Yeah. It's cute and it's lovely and it's it, but it's just a lovely little game to play. Um, and that was that was lots of fun this week. Um, and I uh, yeah, start to finish that was good. Nice to get one. It was not it wasn't on my yog list, but what the hell? <laughs> okay, I think we'll do some news. Mark, let's do some news. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Here is the fucking news. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so in the news this week, um, yeah, Phil Spencer's been chatting, and he's saying, and I was, yeah, we take this as for what it is that uh, Xbox One and Windows Ten will have more exclusive games in 2017 than launched in 2016. Now you remember about a month ago when the Dragon game with the kid with headphones was cancelled. Uh, everybody said, oh, they're going to hell. They have nothing. And PlayStation are knocking it out of the park at the moment with um, mm -hmm. all these Japanese titles. And it is mostly Japanese stuff. And, but they are pretty good. And Horizon Zero Dawn coming out on the 28th. Anyway, so what they're saying is, along with launching the most powerful console ever made this holiday, funny, I watched a TV advert just before I came out here. And I see the big slam sticker on the Sony advert is the most powerful console in the world. And they're making use of that as well at the moment. Um, Microsoft plans <clears throat> to deliver more exclusive games in 2017 than it did in 2016. According to Xbox, Phil Spencer, along with Project Scorpio, Microsoft will have bigger and more differentiated first party lineup plan for 2017. Uh, he highlighted uh, Xbox exclusive um, Xbox One and Windows titles, Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2, Crackdown 3, which we know about, um, and adding that Xbox users can expect more than this in store at E3 2017. And he touched upon other previously uh, announced titles, Voodoo Vince, uh, Remastered, and Phantom Dust re-release, which I thought was dead completely, but fair mm. enough. Uh, they're focused on focusing on building the largest games library in Xbox history, which means our Xbox backwards compatibility lineup will continue to grow. Great stuff. And uh, with such a broad and varied roster of games, the first party exclusives on the horizon continuous improvements across the Xbox Live and upcoming launch of Scorpio. 2017 is going to be an incredible year for Xbox One and Windows 10 gamers. Anyhow, that's good news. There's not a lot there, but it's like look forward to E3. Yeah, it's reaffirming, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and maybe sort of some of the doubters are saying there's not going to be a lot there. Yeah. One little wrinkle about E3 this year is they're going for their conference on Sunday. Sunday, yeah, there's a few doing it on a Sunday. <laughs> yes, so they would usually go on Monday morning, first thing, Sony Monday evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Uh, that's a, I don't know if that's a strange move, a different move. Why? I think E3 is stretching out. I think it's in, I think we think of E3 being in one big room. I think it's just in, the one big room now is is Los Angeles. 
mm-hmm. and it's in different hotels and places, and we get the illusion that it's all in one place. Um, yeah, but they're different buildings and different theatres, are Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Bethesda would have, they would have, they had theirs on Sunday. They're going to stay with their Sunday one mm-hmm. as well. Um, but A3 should be very interesting as far as Scorpio is concerned. Uh, that should be kind of cool to hear about that this year and get more information about that. And we'll be, I suppose it's June, so um, the Nintendo Switch will be well and truly out. We'll know if it's bang or bust by then, I suppose. Uh, in fact, goodness, the 18th, I mean, the my my Switch is only, what, two weeks away? Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. About the 3rd or 4th of, of February? Yeah. So, um, yeah, E3. Interesting. And, and I heard them in this week now, isn't it, they've opened up E3 completely to the public. Yep. So... Yeah, so it sort of turns it into more of a EGS. It's more like Gamescom now, isn't it? Yeah. Gamescom, yeah. Well, I think when you get the public in, the buzz immediately goes through the roof. Because when you've got people who are there all journalists, obviously they're there from a professional point of view. And although that's their job, they get excited. When you've got real fanboys going in places, I mean, the atmosphere is completely different. Yeah. I think it helps everyone by doing that. And those journalists will still make their appointments and they will still mm. have their behind closed door stuff. Absolutely. So, mm-hmm. yeah, why not? I suppose, why not open it up? Why not? I mean, I know e- EGX is a very small thing for us over here, but it's still a big event. It's still mm. a thing that we can we can focus on. And any sort of gaming fan, you've always wanted to go to E3 and whether it's open to the public or not. And I'm sure that out of all of the people that go into it, I'd say a very small percentage are, are real press yeah you know yeah. so the handful of about 30 or 40 companies worldwide that that handle the real press and then the thousands and thousands of other hobbyists like ourselves mm-hmm. oh um yeah but you know june will come around very very quickly well uh okay this tickled my fancy <clears throat> and maybe it was just the the the, the clickbait <laughs> line on it fucking bananas wolfenstein's <laughs> devs new game is either over the top or some sort of fruit love sim I think this is brilliant. <laughs> Wolfenstein developer Machine Games is working on something that probably isn't getting your favourite protein shake ingredient into bed. Bethesda boss <laughs> Pete Hines has made a comment on the new project in the works of Machine Games developer Wolfenstein The New Order and Wolfenstein The Old Blood. Machine Games has been hard at work on something which I can tell you I have played, Hines said during the Kinda Funny Games cast. <clears throat> It's fucking bananas, and I can't wait to show you what it actually is. <laughs> That's brilliant. I can't wait to see this game. I can't wait to see what it is. Is that um, a new uh, new box quote? It's fucking bananas. It's fucking yeah. bananas on the back. Fucking bananas. Uh, the reporter says he was actually quite disappointed that it wasn't about having sex with a fruit. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> as he says, it's quite an underleveraged niche. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, look, you know, that's that's kind of cool. I, I, but Machine Games and uh, Wolfenstein are, are brilliant. So if they have something really wacky and good, hopefully we'll hear about that at E3 as well. Uh, other big, big stuff this week, of course, uh, is from sort of floating from last week into this week is new Destiny 2. Um, and Destiny 2 is one of the most successful MMO-style shooters on consoles. And uh, it'll be coming on PC. I think later on this year, there's going to be a, uh, another big release or patch for the current Destiny. And Destiny 2 is coming out later on in 2017. Um, yeah, I think you're either a Destiny fan or you're not. I think a lot of us played it for a good while and then fell off. Yeah. Lots of people have put thousands yeah. of hours into it. Mm-hmm. I think that the thing that people are talking about is the ones that have put thousands of hours into it is it going to start from zero again? Or will there be some crossover? Will you be able to pull your character over? It has to start from zero. Kind of, you, don't yeah. want to, yeah, but you don't want to split the player base, do you? I know, it's, but like... You don't want new people coming in and it all being like, or you've got one set of players doing this and they've been doing that from the time before and then you've got the new guys coming in doing something different. You've got to have the player base all on the same level, I think. They've got to make the game interesting enough. You've got to stick yeah. to the roots, what made it successful, but you've got to give them something new and shiny for the existing people. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and I think even since it's came out, <clears throat> I think this open world multiplayer type thing has become 
and got bigger and bigger and bigger <clears throat> not bigger more advanced you mm-hmm. know it, i mean learning stuff mm-hmm. from the division yep. and of course um uh what things you've learned from there even if i go into metal gear you know metal gear can you imagine what metal gear would be like if you could play co-op in that world with another person running yeah. around that way as well in that story if they can get that's that basically what, that's basically what ghost recon wildlands is going to be like though isn't it that's just mm. what i was about to say so yeah, wildlands yeah, I hear it's a little. I hear it's a little, the little glitchy, um, but uh, mm-hmm. hopefully they'll get that. Yeah, all they got out. time. There's an but, open, open beta coming up this week, isn't there? Mm-hmm. As far as I know, mm-hmm. uh, I missed the closed beta, but yeah, I'm gonna have a go with the open beta because Greg's pre-ordered this, so I've actually got this pre-loaded already as a, a bit of a freebie thanks to Uncle Greggles. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna be playing it no matter what, <laughs> and it won't come off my yog budget. So. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, no, it Events. looks fantastic. So, yeah. you know, with, with learning from that, if Destiny, I think I think Destiny, the, the prime problem was is it was it felt like a grind. It was just yeah. a constant grind, and it was the same thing over and over. And that is what MMO is. And and yeah, again, you go back to Minecraft. People got enjoyment out of that and mm-hmm. kept knocked it for that. Yeah, um, but yeah, Wait. Wildlands looks cool. <laughs> I didn't get the Destiny thing myself. I, I just didn't. I, I wanted to, but it just didn't get me. But I think it's one of those, someone said to me, you've got to give it 20 hours. I don't want to give a game 20 hours to like it. I want to like it. And then by 20 hours, I want to be loving it. I don't yeah. want to have to build up to that. For me, I it think... was like two different games. You won. It was the, the main game. And then once you hit the end game, mm-hmm. it became a different game. It became I the grind. Try. That's yeah. where the grind starts when you hit mm-hmm. the, your level cap and you're going for your light levels. So. And it got you, Mark. It did. I mean, yeah. that, this sort of yeah. thing gets you like Elite or Conan, yeah. the, Conan the Dangerous, Conan the I Barbarian. I played shitloads of this on PS4 when it came out uh, with, with Shiny and everyone and, and Nicole. And um, I think it was my game of the year in 2014. So, yeah, I, I was hooked into this. Um, I played a lot of the DLC, uh, the first lot of DLC, the Crota's End one. Uh, the Taken king I, I didn't play i played through it but i didn't do all as much of that i didn't do the raid or anything i i wasn't as enamored with it by then i think it was just wearing off a bit and because the division was out as well already then so mm. yeah new i think i bought it three times i yeah. bought it when i originally came out and played it a bit and then i sold it and then i think i bought it again to go back to it when the taken king came out and hardly I don't even think I put it in. I sold it, and then I bought it again when it was as cheap as chips on yeah. digital. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've, so I've bought that game three times, and I've got nothing <laughs> out of it. Yeah. But me. Okay, so um, some quick bits and pieces. Interesting. Terraria, uh, the little sort of miniature Minecraft in 2D, mm-hmm. released back in May 2011, has sold 20 and a half a million copies. Wow. That's fabulous. Fair play, yeah, doesn't it? I could never get into that. Mm, yeah, my boys. Yeah, I know a lot of people love it. Into yeah. It. yeah, I don't know. I don't think my eyes were good enough for it. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that's it. Yeah, it's just so small it's in it. Too small. Two D playing in it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Horizon Zero Dawn. There is a day one patch. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Are we used to that by now? It's yeah. not eight gigabytes. It's two hundred and fifty meg. Yeah, which, which is, is not a lot. Is it? No, that's about a day for yeah. me. That's that's pretty oh. good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's about ten good. seconds for everyone else and three but, days for Robin. <laughs> if yeah. you buy if you buy a game digitally, you're not going to notice the difference anyway. It's just downloading, isn't it? It's only yeah. if you go out and buy the disc, put the disc yeah. in, or your game needs an update. But I can't remember ever buying a disc on the new system and it not doing that anyway of some form. It never works straight out because you've got to preload it anyway. So yeah. it doesn't mean anything to anyone. The disc now is just a license. I mean, yeah. it, you know, realistically, they could present, put out any game right now with nothing on it, with zero yeah. data apart yeah. from the license. Just a code. Yeah. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. you know, frigate, we, you know what? We don't have this ready, but we have it's to go. We have to go gold with something. <laughs> some yeah. the shops. People, some people still want that physical. You know, it's uh, it's a code this week to get you going. It'll be a frisbee by next month. Yeah, pretty much. Well, again, uh, they must be pretty confident that it's good. Now, in saying that, there could be a massive patch one week later. Um, mm-hmm. I see it's now being heavily advertised on the television as well. Um, 
Sure. I hear good things in the background that it is pretty good and there is some depth to it. So uh, uh, that comes out on the 28th, I believe, of this month. So we'll soon see. I see it's appeared on Metacritic on the top there with no reviews or anything as yet. So uh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna hit the world by storm. All right, the final little thing is PC people, um, the best humble bundle in years is out there. If you pay 30 quid, 25 quid, and this thing has 30 games on it, and it is fantastic. There's things like The Witnesses on there, Stardew Valley, uh, what else? Octodad, Invisible Ink, Super Meat Boy, World of Goo, Mushroom 11. Um, you know, there's some fantastic things on there's this. Some here. good games on there. Yeah, yeah. for, for yeah. $30. Well, just some fabulous. people pay more than that just for the witness. Exactly. Well, those, who paid, those who paid for it, I know a lot of people just downloaded it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. time. But in the Stardew Valley and the witness are worth 25 yeah. bit of anybody's money mm -hmm. uh, and the other stuff that's in there as well. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, if you're a PC person and you're looking for a wonderful humble, humble bundle, that oh. is your year of living gamelessly in one nice, neat 30 list. <laughs> 30 games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, yeah, no one started this year. That you're right. That's perfect. Mm, so, yep. There you go. That's all our news. Um, okay. Quite a bit of feedback on Twitter. Twitter last week from the show. We had uh, Fraser the Moo. We had Mike the <laughs> Chin. We had Greg the Delacy and myself. And uh, just had some nice tweets in there from Dastardly Jabby. Excellent episode of the OC podcast. Thank you, Dastardly. Uh, number one stunt master. Great show this week. Lovely to know all about cement. I, I missed that, Paul. Uh, filthy, the most enjoyable episode ever. Really good show, boys. Thanks, Filthy. And Mr. Killer Cranky, another random one. My phone had decided to start playing the podcast by itself. Oh, how I look like a knob. Great <laughs> podcast, though. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Killer Cranky. I would love to know when, where where did that start to happen. Yeah. If it was in the middle of a church sermon, that would have been very, very interesting. Yeah, not good. <laughs> and then from Facebook, Stefan Radcliffe, Steffi Business, he got himself a PSVR and he was just updating us on how it's going. Uh, I've got rid of mine, so it's interesting to see people having lots of fun with things like uh, uh, Resident Evil. Anyway, he's saying, uh, quick update, being, fe <laughs> being feeling sick, but it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> being able to fly an X-Wing and turn around to see the R2 unit is incredible, and I would actually really love to do that <laughs> uh resident evil 7 uh my pants don't even need cleaning they need bearing <laughs> i i actually hear i've heard some people say that resident evil 7 is fantastic in vr that it feels like it was made for it really yeah. not instead of shoehorned in um, yeah ha have you had any experience peds with with uh, vr have you i was lucky enough uh, like like you know I don't want to keep dropping here, but when I was with True Skills, obviously they started out as a development company mm. um, before the podcast, and they were making games, and they got a very early prototype of the Oculus Rift. I think it was the second design. One, so you, I mean, it was ridiculously expensive, and I think it was about seven hundred quid just for that. And it was looks nothing like what the end product was. You know, it was just like really cheap foam around it and stuff. Uh, yeah, and I tried it back then, a few years back, and I must admit, uh, it was a roller coaster. And what surprised me about VR is it, when you go on a roller coaster and you go down to that dip and you feel that dip in your belly. Yeah. I always thought that was gravity. It isn't. <laughs> you know, you're, it's in your head. Yeah. And you are with it. I mean, and they thought it'd be funny to make me stand. You know, you're supposed to be sitting. <laughs> but we all did it. It was all videoed. And it was, you know, you're falling around everywhere. And it was, It. I thought, do you know what? I've always boohooed with VR, but it shows how powerful it is. I mean, it, it's not only, you know, you, you actually get a physical effect from this thing. So I, I think it can be incredible, but it's yeah. going to take... Do you know, I thought, it was, I thought it was really, really good. Um, mm. But I have realised that when I go to Universal or Disney and I go into the... Mm. In Universal, there's the Harry Potter ride, which is you're strapped in, the, the chair does move, but it's mostly big screens and in 3D and stuff like that there. And it just... It made me break out in cold sweat. Yeah. And the PSVR did the same thing. 
And yeah. I, I, I don't think I could push myself through that. No. Um, <laughs> uh, Robert Jackson, he followed up on Stefan's uh, post to say he's faring fairly well with it in terms of motion sickness. Um, there's a couple of good games that just make him queasy as hell. Luckily, Resident mm. Evil isn't one of them. And he says the VR experience in it is so good, it's a real system seller. Rigs is so much fun too. That really did make me sick. I love scoring goals and wiping guys out. So he says that the VR experience really is the future of immersive gaming, in my opinion. Not just gaming, but sporting events too. Imagine sitting at home with a VR headset watching porn. Sorry, MMA. <laughs> or, or boxing from the front row. Or sitting yeah. on a football ground behind or behind the wheel of a Formula One car. Sports like those are suited perfectly for VR experience. That's that point. would be friggin' awesome. And I hope that's Imagine, imagine VR on on the side of Hamilton's F1 car. That would yep. be amazing. And you could turn around and look and see who's behind him and look at well you won't be able to see fucking Rosberg now because he's retired on him. <laughs> Think how much of a subscription you'd have to pay for these sporting things. Yeah. So yeah. we'll get you by the short and curlies if they get that technology. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Sky VR, five hundred pounds a month. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe the so we're running into Formula One stuff here. Maybe the new owners of Formula One have talked about all this new media stuff. Maybe this is exactly the sort of thing that they'll want to get involved with. That would be it would, awesome. That would be great. I mean, you know, Im imagine if you had four cameras on the head of a referee, <laughs> <laughs> and and you've seen what the referee seen. Yeah. So, you know, and you could be, you could call what the referee was calling, that sort of stuff. That's where Facebook, I think, really comes into this. And mm. I think that's where VR, even more so than gaming, is is a big thing. Again, the the this, the this the space station or all of the, you know, being able to go to places that you can't go to, to, to walk around somewhere and completely in VR, that's, that for me is, is where VR is going to be fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for the interactions on Facebook uh, or and on Twitter as well. Uh, you can get us on Twitter at, at um, podcast uh, at OC underscore podcast and our Facebook group, of course, is fb.ocpod.com. Okay, I think it's time for some Jason Johnson quiz. <laughs> and as you can see on the list, we've got Kim in a can, Mark the shark and Ped the pedometer. <laughs> <laughs> and on our notes, people, they put their answers in. So tonight, Jason has sent us, he's back, and he sent us some nice little questions. And of course, Kim will get at least one of these absolutely correct. Or is it about um, Gems of War? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what country does Hawk, the protagonist of Dragon Age 2, originally come from? What country? Oh, that is a Kim question. Yeah. What country does Hawk, the protagonist of Dragon Age 2, originally come from? A. Orlaris. Olas. Olas. Orlas. Sorry. Orlas. Ferelden. The Free Marches. Or Tevinter. So that's Orlas. Ferelden. The Free Marches. Or Tevinter. And if I can have your answers now, please. He's oh, going to no hate idea. if I get this wrong. C, D, and D. We've got C, D, and D. And the answer, I can... Oh, oh my goodness. One of you is completely wrong. And <laughs> two of you are completely wrong. The answer is... <laughs> yes. Ferelden. B. Oh, shit. Um, I never played it. So. I, thought he was, uh, I thought they were from a different one that time. I, I recognize I Tevinter I from Dragon Age uh, Inquisition, so that's why I put D. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Teflon. Okay, next question, and this one is right up all your wheelhouses. What is the name of Link's horse in Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time? Oh, is it Bedroom? Uh, is it Atreyu? <laughs> is it oh. Trawa? Is it Argo or is it Apuna? Not Apuni, Apuna. Atreyu, Trawa, Argo or Apuna? Shit. Hmm. Ah, see, you all know these questions. And your answers, Ped's the pedometer is in, Mark the Shark is in, and Kim in a can is in. Kim, We've got Kim's D, the double D. <laughs> D, C and the D. And one of you is completely wrong. 
And two of you are completely right. The answer is <gasps> Epona. Oh, got that one right and the other one wrong. Jesus. Okay, so I've got to just... Yeah, I, nice. The other one I recognised there was a tray you, and that was from Never Ending Story, I think, wasn't it? Oh, I have no <laughs> Flipping. Who would ever buy any Nintendo stuff? I wouldn't buy a Nintendo <laughs> thing. I would have a Switch order. Don't be silly, I wouldn't do that. No! Yeah, you can tell which one of us is a Nintendo player. <clears throat> Teflon, thank you very much, Jason. You're, you're now up to 34 games that you have to finish, not 23. It's 35 even. 35 games, 36 if you complain. Um, okay, new releases. Uh, who wants to take the new releases? Peds, you haven't spoken weeks. Okay, I haven't got my glasses. Uh, let me bring this second laptop closer. <laughs> <laughs> so these new releases are for February the 18th to February the 25th. Okay, so we have got Berserk and the Band of the Hawk on the PS4, the PC, the Vita, and that's all February the 21st. We've got Halo Wars 2 on Xbox One and PC, that's February the 21st. We've got Night in the Woods on PS4 and PC, also on the 21st. Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin on the PSVR, that's also the 21st. And we've got First Origin on the PS4 and Vita, February the 21st. And Lego World on the Xbox One, PS4, and PC on the 24th. In that already out on PC, or is that an early access game? Yeah, I bought it on early access when it was first released. Lego Worlds, and it ran like yeah. a dog. Absolute dog. Yeah, I've heard so, a lot of bad things about it. I, I've yeah. got it on my wish list, but I've never bought it. I, I see it's a cheap, it's cheap, well, cheap, cheap as chips it's, it's 20 quid or 25 quid or something like that there yeah. it's not terribly dear but i've heard uh, it's had a lot of updates so yeah well well it was interesting i think the biggest problem for me was to build you actually had to build with individual blocks and lego pieces are tiny where minecraft blocks are big yeah. uh, <laughs> and what you could also do is you, you went, went around and you found plans and designs so you could find the big Lego house and press one button and it got built automatically for you. And although yeah. that was pretty and lovely and better than you could probably ever do yourself, um, <laughs> it was a bit, okay, right, fair enough. But yeah, if, I, I like the concept or the idea behind Lego Worlds. Uh, Halo 2, I suppose, is the biggest thing that's out this week. Mm -hmm. um, Halo Wars. Um, if you bought the Legendary Edition, you've already got access to it now because... Uh, our resident Halo lover, Womble, um, he's actually completed it already. Such an overachiever. Oh. <laughs> Such an overachiever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hear it's about if you're sort of taking your time with it, it's about twelve hours. If you're if you're decent and good with it, about eight hours, about six missions. Uh, I hear it's as good as Halo Wars One. Um, I don't hear it's any better than Halo Wars 1, maybe graphically, <laughs> some of the bits and pieces. I hear Blur, I've done the, all the video sections again and cutscenes. I think it's going to be a solid RTS on a console, but it's mm -hmm. a solid RTS on a console. Oh. Uh, okay, so there's monthly freebies. Uh, we've went through this. It's now the middle of the month. You should know this by now. Um, Xbox One, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, Project Cars, Monkey Island 2, Star Wars, The Force Unleashed, which Unleashed which I grabbed today or yesterday or last night. Yeah. That's a good game. Let the kids play it. And on the PlayStation, you've got Little Big Planet 3, Not a Hero, Star Wall, Anna Extended Edition, Ninja, Saint Candy DX, and Torque L. So those are the freebies. Go grab them because they're free. Do it. All right. Talk a bit up there, Mark. Talk about clubs and talk about this log thing, will you? Yeah, uh We've got clubs on every platform you can imagine. Um, so if you look on the Xbox Live system, you can find the OC Podcast uh, Club. On the PS4 communities, we have a, an OC Overseas Podcast uh, community. We have a Steam group uh, called the OC Podcast uh, Steam group. Um, and we are on Discord. Uh, there is, for the live viewers, there is um, a YouTube viewers, there is a, a a description on the um, gameplay, uh, seeing what we put on earlier uh, with the, the description uh, with the URL how to get to it. Uh, but you just basically go to discord.ocpod.com and there's quite a few people in there chatting away. 
And we really? have on Discord. On Discord, yeah. really? Yeah, it's really oh, busy wow. here. Strangely yeah, we keep enough. trying to we keep trying to tag you in and get you in there. I've even set up a, a, a yog therapy treatment room for you in there, but oh. uh, <laughs> people have. Uh, People have sort of like uh, passed away in the waiting room waiting for Dr. Bongo. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Funny, I have been that busy. I have I've slipped. I, I meant to get on a 30, 30 minutes done this week and it just it hasn't happened and it will not happen next week. So I apologize, but there will be a 30, 30 minutes done <laughs> towards next weekend and um, therapy will continue again. Um, <laughs> so to save me rattling off what the YOLG is all about, I've got a nice little clip to play. What is the year of living dangerously? Well, there are six simple steps. Number one, this is a personal gaming challenge over 12 months to help you finish the games that you've bought instead of playing them for two hours and going out and buying something new. Two, select 30 games, your dirty 30, that you really want to finish. Three, email your dirty 30 list to bongo at ocpod.com so it can be logged and we can monitor your progress. Four, set a budget. A budget so you can buy new games. Yes, you can buy games. Mine is £100 or $120. Five, complete the game to the credits and take a selfie with the credits in the background and tweet that to at oc underscore podcast with the hashtag victory achieved and the hashtag YOLG. And finally, six, enjoy your dirty 30 and tell us all about it by Facebook or email. And that, my friends, is the year of living gamedrously. Who is that silver tongued devil? Smooth. Super smooth. Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I was milking it a little bit there. Uh, <laughs> well, I had to fill in that. The music just finished at exactly the time <laughs> I had to yeah. fill it all in. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, look, I'll talk about Victory Achieved. You know what your log is? Go to bongo.ocpod.com. You'll find all about it. There are now uh, over 40 people signed up, and it's keeping me very busy with updates, and I'm missing <laughs> Didn't I miss Roy Jason's earlier on. He's now up to 56 games to finish. Um, and um, uh, so Victory Achieved, the idea behind Victory Achieved is you finish a game to the credits. You take a selfie with the credits in the background and your smiling face or cross-eyed or strange or whatever. And then you tweet that off to at OC underscore podcast with the hashtag Victory Achieved and if you're a logger with a dirty 30, you put hashtag YOLG. Now, Victory Achieved is a contest that runs every three months and every one of these gets entered into a random draw. And the next draw happens on February the 28th. When is that? It's very soon. That's Horizon Dawn Day. And you'll win some money. £15 or $20 is probably more like £14, $26 for gaming vouchers. And you can spend those on any way you want to. And that's a nice thing you have to add to your dirty 30 if you want to without penalty. Um, anyway, lots of victories achieved. Kim, would you like yes. to talk through some of these victory achieves? Uh, they're split into two different categories. Indeed. Our uh, victory achieves and yours are given living game for the 18th of February are Amorous89 with Tales from the Borderlands, Fraser Moo with Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris. Mr. Miyagi, 1984, with Yakuza 3. Our lovely Fraser Moo again with Lovers in Dangerous Space Time. Jabronis with Telltale Batman. Fraser Moo. New, new logger. New logger, J. Broads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fraser Moo with Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon. Amorous 89 with The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Jabronis again with Firewatch. Pilch Reed with The Division. No, number one stunt master with The Bunker. Amorous 89 again with Colot, Mr. Miyagi 1984 with Dishonored, Knife of Dunwall, which is probably should have been on my uh, Yolg. Um, scrolling. Jay Neasy with Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon. Gunslinger X 1983 with Uncharted 4. The Lovely Chinny with The Division. Kevin Fye 1985 with Rise, Son of Rome. Teflon 12 with Raymond Origins. PG Tip 77 with Hitman. Daddy Yickin with the Wolf Among Us. Love that game. 
And uh, we would like to welcome Jabronis, Beezlebub, to Yolg. So, you know, welcome. Uh, Bongo the Thane with Lovers in the Dangerous Space Time. Oh, yeah. Dastardly Jabby with Resident Evil 5. Diddy Gamer with Resident Evil 5 as well. And, of course, the Overachiever, <laughs> Womble, with Halo Wars 2. <laughs> Flecky 90 with Gears of War 4. And those are our, our uh, victories achieved. Mm. Congratulations. Uh, nice to hear Diddy Gamer on there as well. Diddy Gamer finished Resident Evil 5 after leaving it for a long time and finished it in co-op with Dastardy Jabby. So that was nice to get Diddy Gamer in there. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so the, the new loggers, new people that have joined up this week with Jay, Jay Brones and uh, Beezlebub. Beezlebub, um, they've joined up this week as well. So yeah, we are now over 40. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Just fantastic. How do I make money out of it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you have a wonderful thing to finish, wrap up the victory achieved, Mark? You all have a victory achieved. Victory is achieved. <laughs> victory is achieved. A- apologies, it's not live like last week. <laughs> I, I don't believe he actually did it last week. He got bullied into doing it, and he did yeah. it. <laughs> oh fantastic yeah, do you know I was in a restaurant we went out for a bite to eat after Lego and we went into this restaurant it was, it was I don't know it was quarter past five and went in and the restaurant is half full and I go up and the girl comes up wait to be seated and she says uh, yeah we'd like a table and it's not a fancy it was just a grill bar sort of place and she said, really? On a Saturday night? Have you not booked? <laughs> <laughs> well. Half empty. And we sat down and we ate all our meal. And we, we can just about fit you in. We need the table cleared by seven. So I want to be out of here before half six. Oh, all right. And I sat down at the table. And I looked over at Judith and I went, and you haven't booked on a Saturday night? And Judith scowls at me. Because that girl is standing right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Robin, stop it. Stop it. You missed me. Oh, flip me. Oh, but that's so annoying. Busted. Damn it. Last week it was bus drivers, and this week it's restaurant waitresses. <laughs> anyway, look, uh, we're going to start to wrap this thing up. If you want to be part of the conversation, we broadcast weekly on twitch.tv uh, forward slash OC podcast at 11 o'clock now in the uk 3 p.m west coast cooler and 6 p.m on the east coast you can email the show at podcast at ocpod.com or tweet us at oc podcast underscore podcast the facebook group of course is fb.ocpod.com and leave us a review somewhere stick it on a note and put it in your local walmart wheel that'll, that'll be fine just <laughs> leave us a review don't care where it is we have of course all our clubs on ps4 and we have our discord channel which is there as well and just we're everywhere we love being everywhere or, or something stuff uh okay look guys um thank you for being on with me tonight it's a short and sweet show an hour and 15 minutes of stuff uh let's do some shout outs and talk a little bit about scotland mark <laughs> i'm gonna start talking about scotland this time yeah. next week, everybody, I will have met Nicole Amaryllis for the first time. She is in Edinburgh right now. She is there. She is so it's close. Very, it's very second. Very second. And we are excited. All being well, Mark will be there. Womble will be there. We are going to meet up. I'm flying over to Edinburgh, as Americans call it. I'm going to Edinburgh. <laughs> and we're going to have lunch together. And I think it's going to be absolutely flipping awesome. Well, apart from the black eye that Mark's <laughs> going to get and I'm going to get. Uh, but I just, I'm, I'm so looking forward to meeting Nicole next weekend. I really am. Um, I don't know about you, Mark. I mean, maybe yeah. you're a bit nervous about it. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I'll, I've known about this trip for a long time and it's finally here. And it's one of those things where you think, oh, it's such a long way away. It's, it's never going to happen, but yeah, it's actually here now. So yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, have you thought, I mean, what is the first thing you're going to say to her? What, what I mean, have you thought? I, d- I don't know. 
Um, should, should we do the? I want to see you twitch. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we do that? Should we do a wee dance? Oh, I love yeah. you both. You're yeah. gonna die. No way, yeah, I want to see you too. I want to see you play games. Yeah, so it's, it's one of those things. I mean, I, I, should, I don't think I should bring don't get bring her a bunch of flowers. That would be wrong. <laughs> and what would it do? Do I bring her over a bottle of Irish whiskey, or do they just bring myself in a dicky bow? <laughs> 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 anyway, Nick, if you're listening to this through the week, we are stoked. We cannot wait to find to meet you uh, in Edinburgh. Mark's going to be wearing a kilt. I'm going to be wearing a kilt. Uh, I'll be wearing it the right way. I don't know about Mark. Um, <laughs> so we can't wait to meet you, Nick. It's going to be brilliant. It is going to be good. Um, okay, I want to shout out Greg. Greg, mate, good to speak to you. Fraser, good to speak to you last night. He's having great fun clubbing cubs in the snow. What? <laughs> what? Taking kids camping in the snow in the winter time. What is this sort of some life lesson to make them stronger individuals? What what are you Canadians at? Honestly, <laughs> seriously, is this not some sort of child abuse taking kids out into the, into the snow? Isn't it just just crazy? Anyway, I hope they're all in one piece when you bring them back again, and I hope you survive that. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, Rich, you're away as well, having great fun. In a cottage, you're cottaging. I, I hope it's it's proper cottaging. And well, then again, it might be proper proper cottaging, whatever way you want to do it. Anyway, I've said enough. You can get me at robin at ocpod.com on email, bongo.ocpod.com for the blog, and uh, at bongo the scene on Twitter. Mark. Yeah, uh, you can get me um, on Twitter at Mark Annex. I am Mark Annex on Xbox Live, PSN, and Steam. And I've got my YOLG blog, uh, which is at markannex.com. And I just want to shout out all you guys for all the love you've been sending our way for the past couple of weeks because we've had a few ups and downs. Uh, and I also want to shout out Gary DeFelice for um, getting me hooked on yet another game. So <laughs> he's, he's my. My new drug dealer is Gary. <laughs> uh, over to Kim. Yeah, um, that's me. I'm Gamer Girl Twenty Seven Xbox Twitter. That's pretty much the most important thing. Steam, you know, if I'm rarely on there. Uh, I want to shout out you guys because you know it's always fun hanging out with y'all and um, you know our shatters, which you know always keep it humping. So um, let's see who was in the chat box today. We have Teflon Twelve. The lovely Fraser was in there. Uh, RCGC was in there for a while until her parents sh- came over. Um, let's see, was there somebody else? Oh, uh, uh, Soul yeah. Brother. Oh. Baron Von Glauer. You know, yeah. so, you know, y'all keep us busy. So, uh, thanks for showing up and making the Bizarre show. Bizarre 84, he was in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know. That's it for me. I'm going to go and enjoy the 60 degree weather in the middle of February, which seems nuts, but you know what? I'm tired of winter, so yes. <laughs> so, you know. How about you, Peds? Uh, yeah, thanks very much. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you can. It's at Viva La Petrus on Twitter. Uh, I'll give shout outs to all you guys. It's always a pleasure doing this with you. It's, uh, you've made me feel at home very quickly, so I appreciate that. Um, I'll give a shout out to Step J and my current partner in crime, uh, Mella from the Ped and Mella show. So, yeah, no, thank you very much, guys. Sweet. Well, that's it. They do. <laughs> so, we're finished for here this time in this podcast. And next week, we'll be broadcasting from Bonnie, Scotland. Or not. I think we'll have to get some sound bites. That's getting into Irish now. And I am Irish. And that's <laughs> How did you get more Irish? Irish? <laughs> How can I get more Irish? So I have to say flowers to everybody that's out there. And I went to see a film film today and I had got flowers. So yeah, we'll actually, that's one thing we'll have to do, Mark. We'll have to uh, record some, a wee bit yeah. of video footage and get some nice photographs and maybe a few sound bites for next week's show. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so look, everybody, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We will be back at the same time-ish next week. Uh, thanks for listening. I am Bongo the Sane. May your game be with you. Thank you for listening to the Overseas Connection Podcast.
see you same time next week.